I'm Andy, and this is Get Gaming, the channel by gamers with Y for gamers with or without a Y. This is another installment of Monthly Math Solo Edition. I don't know if this will be going up for Solitary Sunday like my last Solo Stats vid because we have a special video series that will be launching on Sunday, so stay tuned for that. And if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do. I love subs. I'd like to be notified of when our new series is launching on Sunday. Of course, hit the notification bell Bing. to keep abreast. And this is the first video of my new hair. Hope you guys like it. I went to our newest subscriber, Dan, who is our hairstylist. Um, finally got into the salon with him and he did this lovely hair just a matter of, well, like an hour ago. <laughs> So I wanted to feature it. I feel like I look like my name is Sven or Gunther. Oh, hello. I am Gunther. Welcome to CX Dungeon. I want to go over my solo stats. Our stats for November, the stats for me and Rich were very light because obviously he was gone half the month in Georgia. The holiday concert season was very crazy, but I did manage to get a lot of solo gaming in because Rich was gone. Like, a lot. <laughs> like an insane amount. In the month of November, I played 27 solo games. I also played 61 games on BGA. I'm going to kind of breeze through those very lightly. I spent a lot of time on the BGA games last time and I want to kind of focus more on the uh, physical table plays, as I like to call them. So of those 27 solo games, uh, there were eight unique games. I think three were new to me. I can't, I almost tried to alphabetize these in a strange order, but the first game I wanted to talk about is a button shot game called At the Helm. So many button shot games. So At the Helm, as published by Button Shy and designed by Ted Heidersdorf. Oh, I actually got his name right. Um, this is a solo only game. This is an 18 card deck builder. How do you create a deck out of 18 cards? Actually, the deck is only like 11. And I was really kind of skeptical. At first, it has a nautical theme. You play as captain going on nautical adventures, you know, and you have various challenges that you're trying to complete like saving some people from a sunken ship or you know exploring a tropical island defeating a giant squid smuggling goods and you do need a few tokens to put on the tracks for the different challenges that you're attempting to meet by playing certain cards so it is one of those button chat games where you need like you know like a cube or a coin or i used a little meeple and you don't have three different goals that you're trying to complete before the deck and the market completely runs out and triggers one of the end game triggers or before your health gets to zero. And there's various ways to increase your health or you can lose health depending on which cards you're playing. So, so it's very, very interesting, very dynamic. It's a very good little deck builder. I don't have a lot of deck builders that you can play solo. So I definitely was pounding for this a lot at the beginning of November and I quite enjoyed it and I highly recommend it if you like deck builders and you like Button Chai's game I think this is definitely a must for any Button Chai collection and of course I played some Hanafuda solo the thing with Hanafuda uh, which is the Japanese flower cards solo is it's not koi koi it's kind of like it's kind of like a Japanese pyramid if you ever play the solitaire game pyramid it's you set out the entire deck basically flipped over. It's a four by 12 kind of grid. And you have a hand of three tiles and you're trying to, every turn you flip over a tile and then you exchange a tile on the board with one in your hand. So you always have the same amount of tiles unless you hit one of the willow or hiki suit. And then those immediately go into the very last row and that, um, shrinks your hand size down to two and down to one. And if it ever shrinks down to zero, that's the end of the game. And so the goal is to try to get, to organize each column for each season. And it's kind of a kind of shuffle, shuffle sideboard flipping kind of thing. I'll actually link to a video for Solitaire Hanafuda. I think it's a Hawaiian variant 
uh, game to use the Hanafuda with. It's just a good way to kind of, you know, familiarize yourself with the different suits if you're new to the game or just as a solitaire game. It's doesn't require a lot of thought. So that's one that, you know, when I was feeling a certain kind of way, I would just, okay, I'm just going to get out the Hanafuda deck. Thank you, classic Nintendo art. I just need to relax kind of thing. And it's one of those things where it's very luck based, you know, it's very hard to win, very easy to lose and, you know, not be able to achieve your goal of organizing everything by the end. It's just something when you feel a lack of control in your life. It kind of just helps center you. That's kind of how I feel about that game. Um, at least that solitaire version of it. And then I also played, while Rich was gone, I wanted to play more with the expansion for Wild Space. And we talked about this a little bit on our haul. And we are still going to be doing a playthrough of this soon, hopefully. Yeah, I'm still trying to decide if I like what the expansion adds. I like the idea of having aliens and a resource that you're managing in this game, um, which is these crystals, which allow you to bribe the aliens. And I like anything with bribery as a mechanic. But I'm wondering if it's one of those expansions where it's kind of a distraction from the main game, at, you know, kind of what it's really adding. I'm still kind of on the fence about it. So I was playing it, the solo variant, several times so while Rich was gone, trying to wrap my head around how this changes the strategy, what the strategy is with this particular expansion. I'm still, mm, I'm, I'm still not certain. So, and the game I've been playing the most solo lately is Verdant. But I think this might be one of my new favorite solo games. Probably not my favorite solo game ever, but I'm very much enjoying working for the entire campaign of this. It's, you know, you're growing your plants, decorating your house. You have this uh, checkerboard grid of cards. There's a tableau building game, essentially, and you're scoring for um, different kinds of set collection things, like the most unique items in your house, you know, and each plant you're trying to make adjacent to certain colored rooms that have certain light conditions in order to be achieving the maximum amount of points and potentially bonuses, depending how early in the game you're able to complete some of these plants. So there's a lot of different things you're trying to balance in just the base game. And the solo campaign takes you through these different kinds of limitations or different variable goal cards it tells you to pick out of the different goal decks and it focuses you in each chapter of the campaign on what you're specifically trying to achieve or go for or focus on. So it's a really nice way of exploring all the different content of the game and what it has to offer. I find it to be a very crunchy puzzle and not as constricting of a puzzle as say Calico, which came before this, you know, in Cascadia, uh, which I also got and I will talk about. I'm working for the solo campaign of Cascadia as well. I like this one a little bit better than Cascadia, I have to say, which I think is a controversial opinion. Um, and people harp on and on about Cascadia. When I start to talk about Cascadia, well, maybe I'll just pull it out right now and kind of compare these two a little bit. Cascadia is a really cleverly designed game. I appreciate it mechanically, and it's quite easy to get in and out of. The setup for Verdant is definitely a little bit more involved and much more fiddly uh, for the solo variant with the conveyor belt and stuff. Because um, you're not playing against an AI, it's just um, this conveyor belt mechanic, and you're potentially losing bonuses, and um, you're just trying to, you know, achieve a certain objective in that solo campaign, similar in Cascadia. But the Cascadia one, there's not as much content as variable in the challenges that you have in the solo campaign, but it's always the same five animals. And what I like about Verdant more is that all the plant cards are unique. So I feel like I'm seeing slightly different things each time. And it is more the art aesthetic of Verdant is more pleasing to me. Seeing all the beautiful plants. I'm a plant person, so that's a big draw to me, obviously, to the game. And I think the puzzle that you're scoring for, there's more variables in Verdant, so it makes it more stimulating to me. Whereas Cascadia, I'll kind of binge it for a little bit, and then I had to take a break from it because it just got kind of like a little bored. 
And I haven't really felt that with Verdant. I think I felt kind of cool to it first, but I've definitely been warming up to it more. So I feel like there's more to unlock in Verdant. I feel like it's a flower that's unfolding. And, you know, it's like a big mandala rose that I'm just discovering the secrets of the universe or something. It's not quite that deep. But I just say that I, I do like Verdant a little bit more. Um, I think Cascadia is a little bit more accessible. So I understand why people love it so much and say it's the ultimate gateway game. But as a puzzle in and of itself, I do like Verdant a little bit more at this point in time. Maybe as time goes on, I will appreciate more the beautiful simplicity of Cascadia a little bit more. But right now I'm just living for this mess of plants. And we're just gonna put those right over there. That's where those are gonna go. So of course, Meadow. Here, I'm just going to pull out my meadow. I think I mentioned in the haul video that I've gotten some extra content for this, including the Bigfoot promo card, the Robin promo card, the legendary creatures. And I did just get the uh, card sleeve pack comes with a mini expansion as well. I think it's envelope R, which has some cards that actually change some little mechanics. You know, it's uh, mostly landscapes and things that have, you know, sort of, different extra things you need in order to build them, you know. Um, so I haven't really played with those yet, but I've played with some of the other content. I just kind of mixed it in. And th those other kind of mini expansions don't really change the game up that much other than adding new content. But yeah, I really enjoyed my, my solo plays in the month of November for this. I think I played it three times solo in the month of November. And yeah, Meadow just continues to be one of my favorite games of all time. And then I dusted off Tiny Towns again. I'm not gonna pull out Tiny Towns right now because it's kind of under a stack of things. But yeah, I really like the puzzle of Tiny Towns. I find a very tight, constricted little puzzle of, you know, trying to build the right buildings next to each other to be quite good. I don't really like the fiddliness of exchanging the cubes constantly for the little buildings. Really, that part kind of, you know, in the solo game, it goes quite quick. You just pull a card, build, pull a card, build, build a card, build, da da da. It goes very breezy. I think the solo mode is quite good. But, you know, and I've worked through different kinds of combinations of the different cards. And so there's a good amount of variability there. The reason, the real reason, though, that I don't pull Tiny Towns out as often is because a couple of sort of the gold cards, the building cards, which are some of the main cards you use in every single game. Like one of them is like the one for cottages, which is part of every single game. It's one of the base things that you do. Still has um, some teeth marks from my ex-roommate's cat. Which every time I play the game and I see that, it kind of pisses me off a little bit. <laughs> well, I think at the time, it was not long before she moved out and I just didn't really want to make a big deal about it well, you know and I got the game on sale for like I don't know $12 or something so you know it's not like one of you you need to replace my $12 game I got on sale no, I'm not that kind of person but it's still every time I just get a bad taste in my mouth which is sad because I love the game I would wanted it for so long before I finally got it um but you know eventually I'll probably get a new copy or just replace those cards or something I don't know and I talked about Cascadia and then of course when I really need some comfort food for a solo game that I'm just like, I just want to play a solo game that's like, you know, back to basics. And I'm feeling, you know, I was really missing rich and just, I was doing a lot of solo gaming. It was just kind of sitting here at home. I'm off work. My man's gone, you know. So cafe, always a good solo mode. Very excellent solo mode. I mean, it's such a multiplayer solitaire kind of game that it just makes a really smooth solo experience and it's all about just working that efficiency engine baby work it work it work it out you have eight turns and eight cards to do it in and yeah scored really well i think uh i was in the low 30s or something which is an excellent score so i'm still good at that game and i totally credit all my solo plays for making me better at that game all these games really when i go to play them multiplayer again i'm like oh yeah this is, this is vibing. And most of the games I play solo, other than the button shies, I have some solo only games that are the button shy, but the majority of games that I play solo are not solo only games necessarily, other than kind of the small ones. Um, 
For next month, I am going to talk about my experience with Hadrian's Wall, but I realized I didn't play that till the beginning of December, so I'm not going to talk about it until our December video. As far as the BGA plays, I did, I thought, a pretty thorough job last video of just talking about breaking down the kinds of games I play on BGA, because they don't change that often unless I'm playing something new, like, you know, I'm playing a lot of Yahtzee and... Koi Koi, King Domino at times. There's always a Feast for Odin game going on or Castles of Burgundy game. I did talk about Obsession last time and I finally won my first game of Obsession and I got 119. I hope that's a good score because uh, I beat Hannah by like three points or something. I think she had like 116. And I was like, oh, I finally figured it out. It was my third time playing the game and I realized it's all about those prestige points. Just get a ton of prestige. And then when the Fairchilds come around, you know, grab one of those suckers and you're good to go. Which maybe this is an oversimplification of what the strategy maybe of that game is. But I don't know, maybe just the engine building kind of worked out for me a little better. And I wasn't getting that many tiles, actually. I think half the rounds of the game, I didn't even get a new tile. And I still managed to win. So I was like, oh, okay. Interesting. Like I said, I'm still kind of figuring out what truly maybe the strategy what the strategies are to unlock in that game but i was just really tickled that i won <laughs> and that's not a solo game that's obviously bga play and there were a lot of similar things i think they're all games i really talked about last time like i played a little more ticket to ride and fairy trails which i covered in the last um last video the sec nymphed and of course always the dragon heart games are on a constant loop with Hannah and but though after finally getting the physical copy of Dragonheart and playing with Rich when I went to go play it with Hannah again I was like oh I suddenly got a lot more competitive with her and I've actually been you know I think before our win ratio was she would win like maybe like nine out of ten times or eight out of ten times or something like that and I didn't mind it so much because I enjoyed the game and I wasn't really you know working that hard <laughs> and having like a really you know, intense strategy. To me, that's not a very high octane, high octane game. Um, but yeah, I played it with Rich and um, I think I didn't realize because on BGA, it's kind of hard to see fine details of the board sometimes. And when we were playing the physical copy, I'm like, oh, there's an arrow from this troll to the sorceress over here. I never realized that before. And there were certain card plays I didn't realize were super strategic after playing it in person with Rich, like literally the day before he left, I went to go play it with Hannah again and I like won. And I've won a couple more times since then. I was like, oh, I actually figured this game out. <laughs> and I think it's a good example of why I really need physical copies of all these BGA games because a lot of times I'm just, you know, you learn by clicking around and sometimes you don't kind of properly learn the game. It's kind of how I felt with Barrage a bit. Um, not so much for Feast for Odin. I think I managed to learn Feast for Odin pretty well from BGA. But who knows when I go to play the physical copy of the game, I maybe, maybe not. I'll discover other things I didn't even realize. I had a Seven Wonders duel match. I can't remember if I won it or not. I generally don't win Seven Wonders duel when I play against guys online because I'm usually playing against people that are like way better than me at that game. I did win it, I think, because I got enough war things to trigger and push the other guy to the very end and like before the second age was even over so you technically win that one that actually was satisfying so you do like winning i say i'm not a competitive person but i like winning um, if i earned it like if it's something where i've been losing a lot and a lot and a lot and then i have a win that's that's nice that's nice i don't want to just like be there wiping the floor with people constantly you know that's not really my vibe but if that is your vibe, that's perfectly fine. Because I personally love playing against alpha gamers because it forces me to be on my best game and kind of figure it out, you know, and work harder. And the thing that I really love is unlocking the secret strategies of a game. So even if I'm not really good yet or I'm still learning the game, I like to come back and keep trying. Because it, it feels very much to me like peeling away the layers of the onion and eventually I got too many tears in my eyes and I can't even see anymore. <laughs> That's how it gets to the game sometimes. Like the game of Castles of Burgundy, I still don't think I've unlocked really the smart strategies with that one yet. Yeah, and um, I just want to update everyone a little bit. Do you like my new hair? By the way, did I talk about my hair yet? 
Did I mention that Dan cut my hair like an hour ago? And um, yes, he's he's my stylist. I'm in a, a very committed hairstylist relationship with Dan. Um, I don't let anyone else touch my hair anymore. And it's been looking like total trash, guys. Like I think every video so far on the channel, my hair has looked like absolute trash, except for one time. Or if it was under a hat. <laughs> so this is as good as it gets. <laughs> this is like fresh from the salon, so you know just a little update i know i'm always saying this and always saying we're going to be doing this video and releasing this video at this date and then it doesn't end up happening i'm trying to release content more consistently um though again you know i've just come to the realization that there's still so much that's rough around the edges about these videos and there's still so much I'm still figuring out about how to make these videos that, you know, I'm trying not to be to make it into something that's not fun. This is something that I'm essentially doing for fun, trying to document my, my gaming journey and share it with you all in this wonderful board gaming community and maybe other people that aren't part of the board gaming community that are watching this. Um, maybe you're just like, wow, that's interesting i don't know half of what you're saying but the box covers are pretty <laughs> so i just want to thank you all all 30 subscribers and dan our new subscriber um for tuning in and sticking with us through all this rough stuff because maybe if god forbid this channel ever did take off and we actually became moderately successful which is to say if we ever got a thousand subscribers you guys are here first. You're you're all watching right now the original hipsters. So um, just remember that in the future, if the channel does become successful. Let's be more positive. When this channel becomes successful, we are actualizing, materializing, visualizing, manifesting. We are manifesting, manifesting. If you like what you see, don't forget to please like and subscribe. If you love subs, hit the notification bell. Ding! Did I say this at the beginning of the video? I'm pretty sure I said it at the beginning of the video. Believe it or not, I've only had one cup of coffee today. And here's a cheers with my Guinness, Mother's Milk. It's officially winter, and um, the Irish part of my soul, I'm half Irish and half Jewish, is like, yeah, it's time for some Guinness. And until next time, this has been Get Gamey. Remember, be gay, do crime, don't get caught, and... Get gay women. Go kiss a lesbian. <laughs>